I headed over to the Consumer Reports Auto Test Track to dive into the subject of hydroplaning. Ryan Pisilkowski, technician here at the test track. Yes, how are you? So what do we got going on here? This is our hydroplaning facility um, where we test tires for hydroplaning resistance. Ooh. What was that all about? That's hydroplaning. You want to try it? Before we go for a ride, Ryan takes me to the tire test lab. How does this tire hydroplane? What's happening is as you drive through a puddle of water, these grooves are evacuating water out from underneath the, so that you stay in contact with the road. When you hydroplane, the tire actually lifts up on top of the water. So you can imagine now you have these grooves, what happens when they go away? And you've lost a lot of all weather performance. It's just like skimming across the water at the beach, except it's no fun when you're on the road. In fact, it can be really dangerous. To experience hydroplaning up close, first testers have to get the track ready. This looks like a road, but it's actually a shallow pool. It takes the technicians hours to pour 700 gallons of water onto the track. All right, this is gonna be exciting, no, right? No, 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 you're driving, you're driving. Uh, yeah. I'm driving this? Yes, you're doing this. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I don't think I've ever done anything like this. So the first run, we're not gonna hydroplane. We're gonna go through about 45 miles per hour. All right, let's do it. Follow that little yep. curved line. Perfect. There we go. You got it. We did. No hydroplaning. All right. So let's go faster. This should be a full hydroplane. OK, 55 miles an hour. Let's do this. Whoa. Starting to feel. Luckily, nothing dramatic. Um, it's, yeah. The car just essentially pushes straight, um, even though you're trying to turn to the left. The car just felt like it wasn't in control. Yeah, we were we were floating on water there. That was a full hydroplane situation. Oh, man. Unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do. You're kind of there for the ride yeah. now. Most people experience hydroplaning for the first time without a trained professional by their side. Luckily, I have Ryan here to talk me through my experience. What we tell people is to um, you know, keep firm grip on the wheel, no sudden movements, lift off the throttle, and wait till you regain uh, grip again. That was a little scary. So you yeah. notice how as we get back onto dry asphalt, you have your wheels turned, now all of a sudden we have grip and the car lurches to the left, which yes. is why you don't want to turn, is because when you do come out of that water, the car might, you know, radically go to the left when you're least expecting it. There might be a car next to you, um, you know, you might put other people's lives in danger. Now what about braking? So Stepping on the brakes isn't really going to help you too, too much, because mm -hmm. you are now skimming across the surface. Now we're really gonna go for it. Run number three, 65 miles an hour. Just like hitting that scary patch of water in the fast lane of the freeway. Here we go, Ryan. Whoa! Yep. Woo. Let's look at the eye in the sky. At 45 miles an hour, like on my first run, when you turn the wheel to the left, the car veers to the left. But at 65 miles an hour, if you try turning the wheel the same way, nothing happens. The car keeps going straight. That's hydroplane. <laughs> it, I, can, I can never get used to it. I don't know yeah, how you no, do it's, it. It's, it's an unnerving feeling. You know, the average driver, the first time they, they experience that, it's, fr it's frightening. It's, it's really it frightening. frightening. Ryan's final piece of advice. Avoid hydroplaning altogether by reducing your speed when it rains and avoiding patches of standing water if at all possible. Then, the only skimming across water you'll do is safely at the beach. Well, sort of. Oof, that's gotta hurt. <laughs>